uh, good afternoon. Uh, today I'd like to give you an overview presentation of the SetScan optical paginator. The presentation is made in three parts and the first one gives you a basic introduction to the optical patination. Uh, we are located in West Lafayette, Indiana and our company name is Energa Incorporated. <coughs> the first question that normally arises when we do uh, optical patination is why do you do optical patination, why not mechanical patination? There are several reasons. The first is uh, optical patination is fast and it is capable of giving you transient data. This is very important for automotive injectors. It gives you much greater reproducibility than mechanical devices. It does not interfere with the spray and optical patination uh, gives you much greater spatial resolution and has very low maintenance and operational cost. So these are five good reasons why you uh, choose optical patination over mechanical patination. Particularly in uh, mechanical patinators give you very low accuracy. Maybe your numbers will be about plus minus 20 percent while optical patinator gives you a much greater accuracy as well as reproducibility. Now let us go through the different types of optical patinators that are out in the market. There are three types of uh, uh, optical patinators in the market. The first is called the laser sheet imaging patinator. The second is a planar laser induced fluorescence patinator. And the last is extension based systems. These are very similar to what uh, we have and uh, the set scan patinator is an extension based patinator. <coughs> the laser sheet imaging patinator in a laser sheet imaging patinator, what you do is you have a laser sheet to eliminate the spray. The laser sheet is shown here going from left to right. Then you place a camera at an oblique angle and you image the spray from that particular angle. And the intensity that you see in the camera is proportional to the surface area per unit volume. <coughs> in principle, it, work, it works reasonably okay, but there are three sources of errors associated with this particular system. The first is laser extinction. The laser extinction error essentially means when the laser goes from the left side of the uh, spray to the right side of the spray, it gets weaker. So the image out here looks much less bright, the, uh, much more bright than the image out here. And so what happens is you'll have to correct for that effect. Similarly, if you have the image of the spray from the front end of the spray, it comes directly to the camera while the image from the back end takes much longer uh, time to reach the camera because it has to go through the spray. So it seems much weaker. You have to correct for that. And the last one is secondary emission. What secondary emission means is some of the uh, laser light starts bouncing uh, among all the particles and then show up the camera where they are not supposed to show up. Because of all these three uh, errors, it is very difficult to get quantitative patination. You can get qualitative patination. <coughs> The second type of uh, patinators is called planar laser induced fluorescent systems. The uh, planar laser induced fluorescent systems is essentially very similar to a uh, mean scattering patinator or the laser sheet patinator that I was just talking about. Here you have a very high powered laser. You uh, form a, a laser sheet from this uh, high powered laser and you shoot it through the spray. <coughs> the power of the uh, laser is very high and its wavelength is chosen such that the particles in that will have fluorescence. <coughs> so this fluorescence image is captured by the array and here the intensity is proportional to the fuel volume fraction. Again, for this sort of patinator, since you are putting the camera at one location and you are imaging the spray, when the light goes from the left to the right, it gets dimmer, which is the laser extension that we talked about. When <coughs> we look at the back end of the spray compared to the front end, you will see much uh, greater differences, that is the signal attenuation. And finally, in most of these uh, high powered uh, planar laser induced fluorescent system, you have short to short variation. So again, you will uh, come to the conclusion that it is very difficult to get uh, quantitative patinators using either the uh, laser sheet imaging patinator or the planar laser induced fluorescence patinator. So next, if we go to our system, which is the set scan patinator, the set scan patinator is different. It has uh, six different lasers. Uh, we have the spray right here. We made the spray from six different view angles. So these are the six lasers that are collimated and sent through the spray and it is imaged using these six uh, uh, array detectors. <coughs> so because of that, uh, what we have is we have looked at the image from spray from six different view angles. And from those view angles, we, would, we do what is a tomographic inversion, which is similar to what you see in CAT scan. And that gives you the path integrated extinction measurement 
provides planar local surface area densities. So that is how the system works. Now some of the performance highlights of the patinator, it is a very fast patinator, you can get a uh, pattern in as uh, low as uh, 100 microseconds. We are using extinction, this is a very well developed technique, it has been around for about 50 to 60 years, so there are no hidden surprises. <coughs> we use a method called MLE deconvolution and this method is accurate to plus or minus 2 degrees, 2, perc uh, two percentage. It is also highly repeatable we get plus or minus 2 percent on patination numbers. In addition, uh, we get much better uh, values for other parameters. We have 6 ag axis which gives us an angular resolution of up to 5 degrees and we use 512 elements. So that gives us a total of 3000 points within the plane. So typically for a 2 inch spray, we can resolve it down to 200 microns. Now one important thing, as I said before, our patinator gives the surface area density. It is very important to understand why surface area density is very good. First, the total amount of fuel or liquid evaporated is proportional to the heat release rate in combustion and the solid mass fraction in spray drying. <coughs> so when you are doing either uh, combustion in an engine or when you are doing uh, drying in a spray dryer, the total amount of fuel or liquid evaporated is very important. Now you want to find some parameter that will, re will tell you in which portion of the spray you have the action going on. So here we looked at correlation coefficients of different parameters. We have looked at four of them. The first is the mass flux, the second is the velocity, the third is the diameter and the fourth is the surface area density. Among all the four parameters, you will see that the surface area density provides the highest correlation with the total amount of liquid that is evaporated. So what we can conclude is for combustion, spray drying, urea dosing, the surface area density is the best method of comparing different nozzles or to make sure that your nozzles is providing very good uniformity. <coughs> the next thing to do is to compare our method with other competitive technology. Here we are providing you surface area density hmm? uh, and we are providing surface area density using extinction uh, tomography. So what happens? Since we are using extinction, it is totally immune to environment lighting. You can go ahead and turn on the lights in your factory floor and you will see it does not make any difference to the results you obtain. <coughs> we use class 2 diode lasers, so there are absolutely no safety issues involved. The whole system is monolithic, what it means is it is a big chunk of metal, you just take it out and put it on the factory floor and you are ready all set to go. We use adaptive grids, so it is not very crucial to align the nozzle to the center of the uh, patinator. It has a very advanced uh, user interface which can be easily operated by a technician. <coughs> it is reliable, so that shows you why it is the only quantitative plus or minus 2 percent on absolute values and plus or minus 0.5 percent on repeatability patinator on the market. We can also compare with other methods, not patinators, we can compare it with other methods of characterizing sprays. There are three different methods that are shown here, one is a PDA, a light scattering interferometry, the other one is diffraction which is, which gives you uh, diameters of droplets and our system is the tomography system. <coughs> The first system gives you the diameter and velocity, the second system gives you diameter of the particle and we give surface area density which you recall is the most correlated to the evaporation of the spray. Now these are the different characteristics of this thing, some I uh, will just highlight a few of them. For both of these systems, the particle shape has to be spherical. We do not have that restriction even if it is non-spherical, it will give you the uh, surface area, projected surface area. <coughs> Second and most important, these two systems are plus minus 20 percent while we have a plus minus 2 percent. So it is much easier to do a gauge R and R using our system. Third, the working distance for one is 3 meters and the other one is 0.5 meters while ours is unlimited. What this implies is that you can look at sprays for much uh, larger distances, you do not have to be really close to the spray and you can look at sprays that are inside combustion chambers or other artifacts. And finally, <coughs> you will see that the maximum density this can uh, handle is when you have multiple scattering while well, we can handle sprays that are almost 99 percent obscuring. So those are the few uh, highlights of our system compared to other methods. <coughs> so these are the concluding remarks that I would like to leave you. 
High speed patination of all types of injectors and nozzles are possible with the set scan patinator. It provides surface area density, I want to highlight this once again, which is the appropriate characterization parameter for fuel injectors, urea doses and spray dryers. And the very high repeatability and accuracy make it suited for both research or into sprays as well as quality audit of nozzles. Uh, that concludes the first part of the presentation.